3,375 miles of travel aboard Oceanographic Research Vessel Algita, uh, I come back to report to you that my 10th voyage to the Great Pacific Garbage Patch was a shocker. Even though I'd been there nine times previously, I was not prepared for what I saw this time. The increase in the amount of debris, the um, area closer to the coast of California than ever before, having as much debris and trash and plastic waste in it as the center of the garbage patch did in 2008 was mind-blowing. Uh, we couldn't travel without seeing copious amounts of garbage passed by the boat each and every day for hundreds and hundreds of miles. This was unheard of to have this kind of concentration of debris. Uh, the speculation is that the tsunami contributed to it, but we did find a lot of things from China. I think what's happening is that uh, the turn toward Asia for the modernization of the lifestyle is resulting in throwaway societies for billions of new consumers and their waste is washing into the sea. We found everything from toothbrushes to umbrella handles to glass bottles, plastic bottles, crates, tubs, you name it, tires, everything floating out there. We even found an island made out of 70 of those large black oval buoys. The Hyzex buoy factory made those buoys and those buoys had created a solid enough island for us to walk on, 80 feet long. This uh, was something I've been telling the world didn't exist, a plastic island in the middle of the Pacific, but we found one. So the increase is alarming and <clears throat> we use drone surveys to supplement our trawl surveys. Pulling a net doesn't quite give you the full picture. You really need to look around these areas they need to be studied in their own right, these garbage patches. So we have the most data on this garbage patch and it will take us years to process it, but the increase, the ratio of plastic to the life that's out there, the ratio of plastic to the plankton that makes up the majority of the life there has increased to such a degree that it's going to be outweighing it by hundreds of times. It's an amazing increase, and I was very sorry to see it. What do you, do you feel, having been there and being the one that's actually laid eyes, boots on the sea, so to speak? <coughs> what is the solution? I love that phrase, boots on the sea. We did indeed have our boots on the sea for an entire month, and the crew came back transformed. Each and every member of my crew has a new perspective on what it means to trash the ocean. Uh, they saw the extent. The extent is enormous. You don't get that from a picture. Everyone wants a picture as if it could be photographed. This is as large as the continental United States. It's been called twice the size of Texas. Different parts of it have different features. But now it's expanded to the point where when I went there five years ago, I didn't see nearly as much debris as close to shore as I did this time. So the transformation that occurs when you experience how our ocean is now a new kind of habitat, a habitat never heard of in the history of planet Earth. There's no ice core, no sediment core that reveals how the planet has dealt with synthetic polymers. Those are our invention. That's modern man's convenience. It's proliferated throughout the entire world and it has made a new ocean out of our ocean. We need to study it. We need to learn more about it. And that's our mission at Al Galita. Uh, preliminary results from our uh, endocrine disrupting 
analysis specialist at Cal State University Long Beach from the Hermes lab uh, is that uh, there are changes, pathological changes to the livers of the fish that live in this kind of habitat, discolored and large livers. Before we get any further into it, he's going to have to take it to the lab and analyze it. But preliminary evidence is that uh, we're seeing the creation of an inherently toxic environment in the middle of the ocean. Uh, looked for a publisher for my book, Plastic Ocean in China, without success. Uh, I've not been able to link up with any environmental organizations in China. Uh, we do uh, have some traction in Korea. There are uh, some Korean environmentalists. We have some traction in Japan. There are groups, uh, Japan Environmental Action Network does marine debris work. So Korea and Japan, yes, but uh, China has yet to come on board as a player in uh, cooperative environmental uh, attacks on this problem uh, worldwide. been said that uh, as California goes, so goes the nation, and as uh, our nation goes, so goes the world, and as California is going now, there's a bag bill at the uh, state level to restrict these polluting thin bags that we find so many of. Even out in the middle of the gyre, we found thin plastic trash bags out there. So uh, we do have some uh, environmental politicians here in the state of California that have made it their mission to stem the tide of plastic waste going into the ocean and we hope that catches on not only in the rest of the nation but in the world itself. We have a lot of wonderful partners in Australia, New Zealand uh, and we expect that this movement uh, will expand uh, to other areas uh, as uh, the, the obvious detrimental effects of trash become so well known. Plastic doesn't degrade, it doesn't go away, so it adds to what's already there. Eventually you get to a point where people get sick of it. It's a, an aesthetic issue and a health issue. And you know, it's sometimes hard to explain how CO2 is a problem since we breathe it in and out with every breath. You can't see it, but you can sure see plastic trash. And boy, did our crew see a lot of it out there in the gyre. Oh. What would you say are the biggest measurable differences between this expedition class and what we were kind of breaking down maybe two or three of the main things that have a difference? In the past, when we trawl our net, and our net has a mouth about this wide and about this high, all we would get would be little chips of plastic. <coughs> it would be very rare for us to find a solid whole object inside our trawl net. This time, virtually every single trawl had a bottle, a bottle cap, a toothbrush. I even have a four and a half foot section of plastic rain gutter that went right into the mouth of this net. Every single trawl had copious amounts of larger items. They've gotten there sooner, they haven't broken down as much, and that's the major takeaway that I got was the weight. All this stuff is going to break into these little particles, but it's been overwhelmed. The environment is being overwhelmed by the quantity of large pieces that haven't yet broken down. That's brand new in our study of this area. What are you most interested in kind of unpack or, or take on now that you're back on shore as far as yeah, the, the next phase is to actually analyze these samples. When you get a number that's astronomical, like in 1999, I got a number that shocked the scientific world. It was six to one. Six times as much plastic as zooplankton by weight in this area. Now, 
If six times as much plastic as zooplankton was enough to shock the world, what's it going to be if I come up with a thousand times as much plastic as zooplankton in this area? Uh, we also tow nets down at 10 meters. A lot of people think maybe the plastic's getting mixed in down to 10 meters deep. We need to find out what's mixing in with the plankton down at 10 meters as well. There's years of work analyzing these samples to get these numbers. I can't predict what they'll be, but I can tell you beyond the shadow of a doubt, they're much, much, much bigger than ever before. Much more plastic than life out in the deep ocean. Charlie, if I could interrupt you for one more, one of your big time supporters. Oh, hi, Bonnie. Hi, Charlie. Assemblywoman Bonnie Lowenthal. Welcome, Charlie. Oh, thank you. Thanks for coming. Yes. All right. Yeah. Aloha. You know, we got a kiss. Mm. <laughs> and I just want to give you a certificate from the state of California. Oh, my goodness. For all that you've done. Um, you don't do it for certificates or letters. <laughs> Uh, you do it because you believe, like we all do, that uh, the ocean is That's right. You've been a pioneer in that protection. I know you're going to continue. That's and right. we're behind you. Thank you. Thank so much. It's good to see you. Great to have you on our team. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Bonnie. Thank you very much. Bonnie Lowenthal, everyone. So, uh, I would, uh, anybody like to talk to Jesus Reyes who took the liver samples of the fish? Uh, he's going to be taking the samples to the Hermes lab. He's right here. Uh, we also have Lorena Rios from the University of Wisconsin Superior. She's going to be sampling uh, the plastic for contaminants like pesticides and herbicides, polyaromatic hydrocarbons, those kinds of things. So, they're here if you'd like to talk to them. Uh, any questions for our scientists? 